All right, so today we're gonna be diving into the NFT gaming update and really kind of a few projects that I think you guys are going to love and also diving into some that aren't on the map just yet. My name is Paul Barron, welcome back to TechPath. As you guys know, NFT and gaming has become what I think one of the most popular and definitely one of the most active spaces within crypto today. We are seeing a lot of movement in the space. And I think a lot of this has been generated from some of the titans in the space. If you look at Axie Infinity, what Sky Mavis has been able to do. Also the number of games that we've seen a lot of maturity start to really develop. And many of these projects start to become real actionable projects that you can go out and invest in. So we're gonna dive into a few of those today and really kind of get into what's moving, what would be some projects that you should be investing in what are, sh what are some projects that you should be watching and preparing for? And then, of course, the big winners, and that is who's, who's actually doing some things and who's actually performing well. Before we get into it, though, our sponsor for today's episode is Prime XBT. Earn daily interest on your crypto, of course. And this is uh, one of those platforms that you can utilize across both trading stocks as well as crypto. So it's, again, one of those variations on exchanges that are a little different than what you might be used to if you're currently trading on crypto. Another thing that they offer within this uh, program is a, a thing called co-vesting, which is a yield on accounts. Uh, and this again, because you've got this in there on idle assets, this could be coming over from maybe on stock sales that you've done. You push this in, you can convert that over to a crypto asset and then do some co-vesting uh, approaches on it. Just to give you an idea of what co-vesting is, it takes idle crypto assets stored in your highly secure XBT account wallet and then you earn a competitive variable APY. So it's very similar to what you might see like on a Nexo or on a Celsius program. So if you're out there looking for an exchange or looking to do something that gives you a lot more diversity, Prime XBT might be the route for you guys to take. Make sure and check the link below and uh, click it up. It helps the channel. All right, so let's get into where NFTs are going and how gaming is becoming such a critical part of how this evolution will really happen around NFTs. Because I think a lot of people confuse NFTs with just the you know JPEGs and the interactive GIFs and some of the art, the digital art that is out there, when in reality, the future of NFTs really is going to become something where they become utilitarian or in essence become a utility inside whether it's a game or inside other business applications that eventually will convert via the blockchain. So let's just jump into a couple of these and talk about them today. One of course, one of the pieces of news that I think is interesting here is one around a project called Covalent and its connection to Axie um, Infinity and of course the Ronin wallet. Now what is Covalent? Just to understand something that is happening, and I think this is an important scenario when you look at NFTs in general, and, and also in the crypto space, well, and of course you guys know this because of the way we do things here on PBN, is that we look at a lot of data via our own crypto power index. Now our CPI is what we call it, gives us a lot of information on sentiment and also on amplification, which is kind of a leading indicator on how a project might do based on price action due to sentiment and amplification, which is kind of the whole Metcalf's law effect on how people are talking and how people are acting on a particular cryptocurrency or on a particular project or game. Very similar to what Covalent is doing. The interesting thing here, and I wanna just kind of go to this, this article here. Covalent is the only company that has indexed the Ronin chain and is able to provide a unique data analytics that will help the blockchain game publishers make important changes to improve experience for gamers. So essentially, they're analyzing the tool set inside of Axie. Look at this, Kova's data set uh, supports 25 billion plus transactions, 30,000 plus price feeds, and over 200,000 smart contracts for queuing. This is our querying. Um, this is a massive, understanding data science and what we've been able to do with our own CPI, we can haul in ridiculous amounts of data just because of the amount of coins and tokens and projects that are out there. But being able to do this inside a wallet and inside on-chain data like this is pretty impressive. You also look at some other things that they're doing down here. I wanted to highlight a few things. Deep dive uh, data analytics provided exclusive by Covalent. Ronin's integration has been able, enabled by Covalent to extract granular 
and programmable data on the blockchain. Developers are able to access rich data without the or with their unified API, just a few clicks. So they made it really easy for them. Covalent is also the only company that has indexed the Ronin chain and they're able to draw out these insights. This is going to be something that I think eventually, and really real, real time today, is going to help projects like, that, like Axie and others. So Covalent could be an interesting project to watch. I want you guys to keep a real close eye on this one. We won't dive into that today, but there are some things around this. When you look at some of these circling projects in the NFT space, and also what affects NFT gaming trends, the other aspect of this is going to be the data side, which is going to be pretty huge. Here's another statement from them. We're able to provide unique insights. This will help blockchain game publishers like Sky Mavis, which means they're essentially going to make this available to others, make important changes to improve the experience for gamers. That's a common thing, kind of the Web3 gaming projects that they're going to be uh, you know, analyzing and going in that direction. The metaverse in itself, I think, when you start to see the amount of data that's going to funnel through the metaverse and all these gaming projects, data science will become the true AWS of the space. And what you look at, whether you're looking at Web 2.0 and what traditional internet e-commerce uh, analytics are doing for understanding shopping habits, all those kind of things, same kind of thing will happen with metaverse. Some additional statements here. Covalent provides a unifying AWS to bring full transparency and visibility to assets across the blockchain. This was talking about their 25 billion transactions. But look at the statement down here, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, he believes that the API endpoints will end data extraction will be a great use for upcoming Axie land feature, and then the Ronin Dex, and a forthcoming Sky Mavis game. So that means that we will see continued movement on Sky Mavis. We've been anticipating the potential new releases, and they've been talking about it for quite some time, but this really, I think, kind of con confirms what we could be seeing. And again, data analytics will start to help guide game publishers in understanding how to utilize and maybe even build certain application levels. So again, Covalent, another one to watch. Another story out was this piece right here on the VV token system and OMI. Now, OMI I want you to take a look at this token because it's it's a little bit underperforming right now. Um, and I'll show you some data on it here in a bit. We did pull some sentiment and some amplification on OMI and where it's going because it's trending down downward. But the key thing here is its connection to Vivi. Vivi being pretty much one of the icons for NFTs and what that future might look like. So if you look at here what they're saying, transaction within the Vivi digital collectibles platform are underpinned by the OMI token, which is completed, com complemented by the innovative burn and buyback system based on the sale of NFTs. OMI tokens offer a range of utilities. So again, it's a utility token inside these ecosystems that will continue to be very integral in the operation of the app. This is going to be big if this really comes to light. And I think when you look at where digital collectibles are rolling, you can kind of look at some of these stats. Leading mobile first digital collectibles platform with over 300,000 users, big number, and more than 500,000 digital collectibles sold since the app went live. This was, remember, this was this year. The app is consistently ranked in the top 10 in the entertainment apps world. So Vivi offers a new way to participate and interact with their favorite fandoms with officially licensed the 2D and 3D uh, models and artworks. All that's coming in. You've got all the biggest brands there, DC, Cartoon Network, General Motors, et cetera, all coming in. And all of this is eventually going to be tied to what could become that underlying component. And that is from day one. They've been built to accommodate mainstream, non-crypto audiences, meaning they're going to be ease of use, easy onboarding, which is something I've talked about here on the show is that at some point we're going to see an evolution with NFTs and the metaverse that makes that on-ramp super easy. And if you guys are watching our show, the likelihood is you're a fairly sophisticated cryptocurrency investor. You're probably heavy into NFT and gaming. You understand this ecosystem. You understand the marketplace. And you also understand the pretty much the hoops you have to jump through to be able to invest in a lot of these projects. And I think with the VV project, we're going to continue to see some pretty interesting elements of how they're going to make it easy for onboarding mainstream. Because remember, one thing that has to happen for all of this is we have to be able to mainstream not only cryptocurrency, but blockchain gaming. 
And that is going to be the next major layer where we'll start to see a lot of traditional, you know, AAA games maybe converting and really coming into the blockchain space at full speed. That's the thing that is going to make it cool and easier to do. Getting started with OMI token metrics and details. OMI is a utility token. You can buy and sell digital collectibles, NFTs on VB. It also underpins all financial transactions within the app. However, most of these have been hidden from the user for easy onboarding. Again, this is something that they're making available, which I think is going to be um, super interesting. Token generation event uh, took place early this year. Total supply cap, 750 on the billion. Uh, thanks to token uh, tokenomic design of VB, almost 450 billion of these tokens will never enter circulation, which again is only going to drive some valuation here, I think. At the time of writing, you can, you can, it's a Go20 token, Go chain. However, VB is currently migrating to the Ethereum via Immutable X. So another project that we've talked about quite a bit, and at which point OMI will migrate to an ERC20. So this could be the scenario of why it's undervalued right now, meaning OMI. And again, we'll talk about some other projects here, um, including UFO, and so stick around for those, UFOs, uh, Super Farm, Monkey Ball, et cetera to really kind of get into that. But definitely something to be watching here uh, further. I want to jump over here to this one. OMI, OUP, a system designed to give OMI token holders utility and benefits of the VB app. Another one, if this is the first time you hear about OMI, please take a look at the VB token system and the OMI utility, uh, which I would suggest that you guys do your homework on this one because I do think this is one of those that is a bit of a sleeper. And just like a lot of these market movers, where we'll put together a lot of this data, we'll pull in some additional of our own CPI data, give you guys some direction to go down and take a look at some of these projects, like much what is happening over with Ronin and Covalent, and then also right here on uh, OMI. But make sure that you understand, this is not investment advice. The number one thing this is for is education, hopefully getting you moving into the tech space, and tech space meaning blockchain technology and how that's going to affect so many ways of life. Uh, let's also talk a little bit about Super Farm today because Super Farm did have a little bit of an event uh, today. They were, uh, let me just kind of go to this tweet real quickly. Update, thanks for your patience. This was in reference to their high rise app uh, launch. So uh, minting has been disabled. This was just a few hours ago, uh, but they are resolved. Uh, it, and then of course they're not affecting. It was about a three hour mint time. Some people were able to get through this. It did get a little bit of pushback from the community, but the point is, is that they were able, I think, to get back into to play on this. So check back in 20 for an updated timeline. Let's see what Super Farm is doing right now, if they've done anything on updated. It looks like uh, about an hour ago, over 2,000 mint requests in the first second. This was the problem they had, clogged the site. We're patching everything, it'll be up, back up soon. Doesn't look like there's an update right now as we record on this, but the good point is that they are, I guess good point, is it usually means there's enough demand, which is the bigger aspect of this, is demand is high, but I'm always concerned with projects, even those kinds of projects that have that kind of problem. But you, you have to remember, we look back on Solana and what happened with Solana this summer. Again, another beta project that was just early out did have a problem uh, with how they were handling transactions, ended up crashing the system, and we've seen this with many projects. So again, is this going to be an effect on Super Farm in the long term? Absolutely not. Is it a short term little glitch? Sure, but those are always the good things because I think they help identify where weaknesses are in any kind of project, and this is one of those. Another project that we're gonna be scoring today is UFO. Now this one is probably the most First of all, it's the first. It's the most asked about with by you guys, the, our audience in the in the chats, always in our in our live streams, and even in the uh, comment section. Everybody's always wanting to know about UFO, so we thought let's get in a little bit deeper on it. And diving into UFO, one thing that I've noticed about UFO more than anything is they're very secretive, uh, so not doxing their team. Definitely not putting it out there. And what's more, even more interesting is the news releases that I find on UFO. And let me kind of go to this. If you, if you look at this, this is just one of the pieces that uh, is out there, but it's a press release. Even though it's put out here on these sites like Crypto Briefing, these are press releases. So this is something that you guys should learn if you're not. 
when you're doing research, when you're going through, because a lot of these press releases can be disguised as news articles. These are not news articles. There's no journalist that has written about this. This was written by UFO and written by their team. Now, the, the interesting thing is if you look at just some of the things they had, they had this big uh, event, which uh, the event success had 600 gamers sign up, mark the advent of a uh, trend e-gaming events uh, it's here to stay. I would love to get someone from UFO on the show. So if you guys are out there, the Diamond Circle Nation, um, put, just put it out there on Twitter because we'd love to get somebody from UFO to come on the show. Tell us a little bit more about the project itself and really to understand where it's going from a roadmap standpoint because I think that's very important. UFO Gaming, decentralized social uh, gaming platform built on the Ethereum blockchain. Team behind UFO Gaming are currently in the process of developing their own debut game and have already proven to be serious players in the market with their intricate metaverse ecosystem. Remember, this is a press release, okay? Not a news article. Uh, successful launch, UFO, the 10K Cup. This was, of course, the mission extends beyond developing high, high playable games. To show just how invested the community is, really are, UFO Gaming Cup was live stream on Twitch, which it, it was. And uh, there was kind of a surprise winner on this too, but a prize from the Complexity Gaming uh, I have no idea who those guys are because I'm not a huge gamer. What I do is analyze the data and look at how the market is moving around these game companies. So interesting was only 10 grand at stake. That was a little bit of a, of a letdown in, in the essence of if you're going to have something like a UFO game, especially to this level of awareness, is why that wasn't a bigger uh, move than what they had. 600 still not a bad jo a job, I think, but when you look at esports, that dwarfs what's uh, out there really in the bigger space. So it'll be interesting to see how this comes, but uh, if you look further into, um, into UFO, here's another, you know, just a quick one. Ethereum source, so this is the play to earn all coin, and this is talking about UFO shatters, a million dollar market cap, uh, or billion dollar market cap, new alien theme token, obviously UFO gaming. Now this one is where they're getting a little bit of press and you can kind of see just the movement of the space. It's definitely had some massive moves over the last little bit of time. Now, the question is, and question will be, is can this continue to hold on and climb? Or will we start to see maybe the project start to stall or just not roll out the roadmap in time? That's the other thing. When you don't see the roadmaps really out there and pushing toward it, whether it's on Twitter or it's within the website, things of that nature, those always start to concern me a little bit. But when I look at, again, um, you know, these kind of press headlines like this one right here, not press release, but, uh, press headlines, but press release headlines, UFO gaming uh, labeled to be the next Axie Infinity. I think this is a little bit over the top, uh, even though it was put out, again, as a press release. And again, not, uh, not something that I would recommend, but when you see these kind of things, just read it for what it is as a press release. Always look down at the bottom and you're always going to see normally in press releases a media contact. And in this particular case, case you get source UFO gaming. That's kind of the, exec, the existence of it. So take that for what it is. Uh, understand that it's a somewhat secretive operation with UFO. They haven't really brought this out into the open space other than maybe inside some of these insider gaming conferences and some of these activities, but really for investors to really jump into this, this is one that I think is a little bit more hands-off to me. If you look at their chart currently, UFO gaming, uh, definitely in the one day, it's definitely up a little bit. Let's look at their seven day, kind of a little bit more erratic trading, but it is climbing out over the last week. Uh, this of course has been during the little bit of the dump, and then you can kind of see it's one month, and then we'll go to its all time. That's the climb that they're talking about and have been talking about for quite some time. Listen, if you're not, if you don't really care about the game itself and you're just looking at, at these as an investment vehicle, then you need to treat them just that way as an investment vehicle. So understand the, you know, the basic fundamentals. And that is how is the game constructed? Who's the team behind it? What do the graphics look like? What's the roadmap and their achievement level to that roadmap? And then take a look at the sentiment data and see where that leads you. If you get all those things kind of compiled, then you can make some good assessments on where it's going. Another project, of course, you guys understand, we've talked a little bit about Monkey Ball here on the show. 
you can kind of see a little bit more around what Monkey Ball is doing, much more open in terms of their roadmap, how they plan to go to market uh, the game itself. So we've talked about this one being a huge one. One thing on Monkey Ball in terms of the potential of investing in this, there's two strategies that you can use on investing in these early games like this, especially if you're not in the pre-IDO or pre-sale. And that is wait for that initial pop and then buy on the backside as it slides down. That's the typical scenario that you'll see on an NFT game project like a Monkey Ball. Now, some projects might jump out there and feel like they're going to hold for a much longer time. Don't get caught on a FOMO in. Wait for that correction. Wait for that mark, market to settle down a little bit. And don't get caught in those kinds of scenarios. Come back in on the backside and then take a look at where it's going to go in the long term. Because then you're going to be able to study a few new elements. And that is you're going to see trading volume. You're going to start to see sentiment and analytics uh, and amplification start to flow into the market on that trade, just like what we did early on with Axie Infinity and trying to study Axie. Those kind of things will start to resolve themselves. And even more, you'll start to see much more uh, activity in terms of the roadmap being developed out. So keep an eye on those as we continue to move on. Uh, this is something, though, that was a little bit interesting with Monkey Ball. This was a pinned tweet. Monkey fans, awesome news. Pay attention due to the overwhelming de uh, development of, on Star Launcher. Um, decided to extend the grace period to get KYC. This was not necessarily a good thing. And again, this gets in the scenario of project leads that have not either rolled out projects like this so they're not aware of the pitfalls that you face during the ramp up right to the edge which is what they're in right now. So they've uh, essentially kind of restructured the game a little bit. If you look here, KYC submissions have exploded over the last 48 hours. This was on November 26th. By popular demand, we have extended the KYC approval window to ensure we are onboarding as many cadets as possible, uh, but not well taken if you can look at some of the content, uh, comments of where this is going, because it does not necessarily assure that everybody gets a fair allocation. This is the thing that will occur in these kind of scenarios. Don't get completely scared off of those because these are typical startup woes that many of these projects are, are experiencing, much like what Silicon Valley dealt with in terms of how startups roll out to market and they get to that MVP, which is the minimum viable product that someone can go out and invest in. And that's essentially where Monkey Ball is at this point. So it's going to be interesting. I'm still a big fan of this one. But I am a fan on the backside, maybe looking at a later investment in Monkey Ball when it goes a little bit more out there. Let's get into a couple of the charts, and then we'll go to the sentiment rankings on all of these projects. But I wanted to just show you the OMI token. This goes back to the association with Vivi right here. And you can kind of look back here in October, a month ago, sentiment was holding out at 68.99. And it was continuing, it had a little bit of a rise and then a drop. We did not chart this one on, uh, on all aspects. So we haven't been watching it, but we are starting to watch this one a lot closer now. What's intri intriguing to me right here is it's got its low almost all the way back here to end of September. And if you look at this right here, sentiment is, is up a little bit from what it was just 30 days ago. Amplification also up a little bit of what it was 30 days ago. Now, does this tell me that this could be continuing a sideways action before we see a little pop-off? Not sure exactly, but this is definitely one of those tokens that I, as I explained earlier, that I'm watching very closely in the NFT space. So put it on your tag watch uh, list and understand it. Here's Super Farm. This is the one that was a little uh, weird because as I said, Sentiment came out 73.37. This was back here on November 17th. We thought we were going to see a nice climb, and we did. This was a nice rise. It went sideways on us for a little bit right here, and we missed the window. It dropped out of the window more so than we anticipated. And you can kind of see uh, just in general where that thing came out right here. But it's come back into our amplification zone. It looks like it's performing back here in the 180. Uh, to what I think will be around up a 210 mark in terms of high. So not big uh, moves for Super Farm, 
This is one of those projects, again, that I think you could look at this more long-term, much like a sandbox, a mana, if you're into going in that direction, definitely an Axie Infinity kind of thing. Definitely not in, these, in that level, but when you look at where this is in the very early stage of what Super Farm is trying to do, definitely uh, interesting to me. And you can kind of see their history overall. We'll go to their all-time, just to kind of see. And remember what I talked about with Monkey Ball is here was this initial... Uh, release, there was the climb, and then here was this traditional and typical fall off that you see in all these projects where that frenzy starts to come back in, it reels in, and then that's the typical period that you'll start to see. Now again, this was right after the crypto winter occurrence that we had in May, but it could have been climbing right here in uh, October and November, or excuse me, October and September, when the projects, when we were seeing all-time highs in Bitcoin and things of that nature, but it did not. So this would have been the perfect time to get into Super Farm. In fact, we put it in our DGEN portfolio and it was a good one. So, and of course we've had some good, you know, some good climbs here over the last 30 days. You can kind of see where it was right here around 1031. Again, this was Metaverse Friday that it occurred uh, October 27th, I'll never forget it. That was the date where we had the announcement from Facebook and a lot of these metaverse, NFT, and gaming projects started to really move heavily. So just as a final, we'll go over here to the update chart. Sentiment, this is a 60-day uh, CPI, so it's looking uh, backwards 60 days and also looking at the average amplification score. Sentiment on Superfarm holding it at 71.49. Amplification a little softer, which indicates a little bit of that pushback we've seen in the community but also not necessarily massive growth, which is what we have seen with that project. UFO, this is the one that's a little bit more concerning to me. Very high amplification, or excuse me, very high sentiment numbers. Amplification is not as high on this project. So I see this one probably being more of a sideways action for quite some time. We'll see if it gets something released. And again, I think they have to come out and start communicating with the industry to really understand where this is going. Monkey ball, typical, super pre-sale hype. We're seeing the amplification. We will see this one blow off top and definitely. Uh, so this one right here, this tells me right here, you've got to be cautious if you are getting into that one. You guys stay tuned, of course, for all these because we're trying to do these updates each week on NFT gaming. We'll also get into the metaverse quite a bit. Uh, obviously, we'll do our altcoin updates and try to keep you updated as to as much we can on what's happening with Bitcoin. So stay tuned right here for that video. We're going to try to drop that one today as well. If you guys have some comments and you want other projects looked at, or we can dive into them, we'll do our best. I can't promise that to you, but we'll get as many of those as we can. UFO was brought out really because of our audience and you guys asking about it. So that's the way it works around here. If you want to hit me up on Twitter, it's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.